You're tuned into HCAM News. Tom Nappy here, and I am joined by Amanda Fauche. And Amanda, you are here to talk about the Chamberlain Wayland Neighborhood Coalition. Yes. Can you tell us about what the uh, coalition is all about? Sure. It, um, it's a group of neighbors uh, comprised of uh, the neighborhoods of Chamberlain, Wayland, Sanctuary, Charles View, people on Hayden Row, some people on Teresa Road. And it's a, a group of neighbors that have formed uh, about mid-March to come together and see if we can mitigate some damages to our neighborhood that may happen with this um, huge development that's being proposed at the end of our, our road, end of Chamberlain, and a cut through that would connect Chamberlain and Wayland. And how did this all get started? Was it a group of people from the area got together and decided to start this and then they went around to get more people on board? Was that pretty much how it worked? Pretty much. Uh, one of our neighbors, Gary Trendle, um, he is very involved in the town uh, goings on and he's got a real good uh, feel for what's going on. He let us know in February that this may happen. And we had just moved to the neighborhood in May from Elm Street and there's a lot of construction going on there so we were very upset about it and in talking to just immediate neighbors we decided we have to do something we can't just sit back and let it happen so uh, some people from Wayland came in and we had a meeting in our barn um, about mid-March mid and developed a plan and a course of action to try and work with the town and work with the developer to keep the neighborhoods intrinsically um, the way they are. I mean, they're both awesome neighborhoods and the kids run up and down the streets, ride their bikes, there are horses, cats, dogs. It's, it's an old school, both neighborhoods. Chamberlain itself is a scenic road. It's designated as scenic road. And if a cut through were to happen, it would drastically change the neighborhood for good and it would never be the same. And what do you think are some of the problems that it would create if, if this were to happen? Uh, there's a long list. So uh, since I live on Chamberlain, I know mostly about Chamberlain, but I have been on Wayland. Wayland is a family area. Uh, there are lots of kids up and down the street a lot of times. It's a cul-de-sac, so there aren't a lot of cars. Um, Chamberlain is very narrow towards the end where I live. It's really only 10 feet across towards the end. There are wetlands on either side, 100-year-old trees, rock walls. So to if they were to build that, that subdivision, which is the largest since Legacy Farms, they would have to widen the road. And it would cut into people's lawns at least 10 or 15 feet. And then, since Chamberlain itself is a long straight road, it would encourage people just to fly down the road. And it would get to the end of the road and take a sharp right into the new development. The kids wouldn't be able to play on the street anymore, ride their bikes. There's there's a lot of joggers and walkers, and one of the trailheads ends up on Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. People would be walking out of that right into a busy road. Um, and this is kind of a small microism of, of what's happening with, with all of Hopkinton. And even though some people have thought, like, well, maybe this is just in your backyard, but it might not be. It, you know, in a couple years, it might be in your backyard, or it, it's a bigger problem that Hopkinton is experiencing with really quick, quick development and approval of things without thinking about the infrastructure and pedestrian safety and traffic mm -hmm. and school system. So where's the neighborhood coalition out now? Where's the process now? What's the next step? So the next step, we have a website up and running. We have a petition that's almost up to 500 signatures. And it's educating not just our neighborhoods, but all of Hopkinton about things that they can do to protect their neighborhoods and protect Hopkinton in itself. Um, there's a big meeting on April 12th in this uh, building, actually, that the planning board is going to be open for public comments and questions about the development. And the um, developer will be there to answer some questions. So even though we, we're not trying to say you can't develop anything, what we're trying to do is say maybe not a cut through, maybe two cul-de-sacs, and then that way, you know, it won't be a through road, people won't be cutting through. You can keep the neighborhoods the way they are. So that's what this April 12th meeting 
is going to open up for a lot of people. And have you heard back from anyone, uh, town government-wise, or the developer, or anyone like that? There's been a lot of talk back and forth between town planning board, and um, not necessarily with me specifically, but with Gary Trendle, and Phil Totino, and Don Keevy, who's the other co-chair of the coalition. And you know, they're, the town planning board um, often is saying they're constrained by town bylaws, which is true to a certain extent, but the master plan talks about preserving na neighborhoods. So we're in talks with them back and forth saying, listen, this is what the master plan says. Can you uphold this and try and push back a little bit on these developments? So also people have been talking to the fire chief and the police chief, and there's been a lot of calls back and forth just to s let them be aware that we know what's going on. We want to work with them about it. Well, there's obviously a good amount of people on board with this, so mm -hmm. I look forward to uh, seeing where it goes, and uh, thanks so much for coming in and telling us about it. Great. Thank you very much for having me.